This man has a smile on his face. He's 11 points ahead in one poll. He's promised an earthquake on Thursday. But what then? There are elections for local councils as well as the European Parliament on Thursday, May the 22nd. All 32 London boroughs, 36 metropolitan boroughs, 74 district councils and 19 unitary authorities in England will be elected. In Northern Ireland, there are shadow council elections for new super councils. There are also five mayoral elections in Hackney, Lewisham, Newham, Tar Hamlets and Watford. These local results should be known by Friday. In the European elections, all 751 members of the European Parliament will be elected across Europe. 73 MEPs will be elected by people living in the UK. But the results won't be announced until Sunday night, after voting has closed throughout the 28 member states of the EU. Let's speak now uh, to UKIP's Suzanne Evans. She's at Westminster. Suzanne Evans, welcome to The Daily Politics. Now, UKIP claims that there's going to be an earthquake in British politics on Thursday. Now, suppose there is. Suppose that's what you give us. What does UKIP then need to do to become a, a more grown-up, proper party? I think UKIP has very much become a grown-up proper party. Let's forget we've been around now for 20 years. It has been some time in the making, but we're definitely there. And I think what we're going to be doing after the European elections, if we do cause this earthquake, and obviously the polls are looking like we're going to, and I certainly hope so, is then we'll be working very firmly towards 2015, getting our general election manifesto out to keep those votes on board that we won for the Euro elections and putting forward common sense policies that really will bring Britain back to the people. What we want is to be able to hold the balance of power come the general election. And if we can do that, then there will be a referendum. At the moment, the, the Labour Party, the Lib Dems, the Greens are saying we don't want one. Uh, the Conservatives, what they're offering is far too little, far too late. So that will be our aim post the European elections. Well, you say you're a more grown up party, but when you look at the stream of gaffes and controversies created by your candidates and members, I'm not going to get into them this morning. It's well trolled territory but when you look at them at the very least I would suggest you need a more robust system of selection and scrutiny. Well, I think you, could, you could say the same, couldn't you, Andrew, to the other three parties who, let's face it, have been around for a lot longer than us. There's an equal They've got stream. nothing like the embarrassments you've uh, had. I'm afraid they have. Just this week, just this week, since Monday, we've had 17 Liberal Democrat, Labour or Conservative councillors either arrested, charged or convicted on all manner offences. In addition to that, we've had an extra 13 who've been involved in some kind of racist, sexist or homophobic incident. I'm not saying that I'm proud of 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 any of that, I think the whole of politics probably needs to be cleaned up, but I certainly don't think we're any worse than the other parties who have much greater resources than we do when it comes to checking out their candidates. They're simply not doing it. And not only are they not doing it well enough, they're even putting people in power who they know have got criminal convictions or have previously belonged to far-right fascist parties like the BNP or the EDL. Can you be, continue to be a one-man band? I mean, the only time any other UKIP politician makes the headlines is when they say something loony or objectionable. I don't think we are a one-man band. One of the things that I've noticed since I joined UKIP a year ago is the huge amount of talent in this party. We have fantastic spokesmen across the patch, a huge amount of expertise in the party. We're not. Inevitably, the media focus is on Nigel Farage. I mean, he's a fantastic performer. He's a very charismatic leader. I can quite understand why the focus is on him. But believe me, there is a huge amount of talent across. And when we get our MEPs into, into, into power after the European elections, uh, we will see many more of them, I think, on our television stations, on radio, in the newspapers. And we will really bring that message to the local public. We're not a one-man band. We have a huge amount to offer. Who runs your party? The party is run by uh, Nigel Farage, our leader, obviously. Who, but, he who, spends all the, but he spends all his time running between television studios and in and out of the pub. You'd be who actually runs the party? <laughs> You'd be amazed how much he does. And, of course, we do have a national executive committee like the other parties, too. So who runs it? the National Executive Committee in conjunction with Nigel Farage, uh, the MEPs, the spokesmen. It's very much a joint effort. Your uh, local government manifesto says, quote, that if you vote UKIP, you get UKIP. You then go on to pledge that your councillors will not toe the party line. How does that work? 
Well, there's a different, there's a, there's a fundamental set of policies that all UKIP councillors once elected sign up to inevitably. But when it so comes to... So they will toe the party line on these policies? On, on the main policies, because that's obviously what people are going to be voting for us on. It's no good putting forward a manifesto like the Lib Dems did in uh, 2010, saying they're going to abolish tuition fees and then reneging on it. We put forward a branch of policies at local government level, which include things like uh, preventing uh, overdevelopment by bringing back grammar schools, by cutting council tax, and those we will absolutely stick to but when it comes to individual local issues say a particular development in a particular area or the closure of a school or the opening of a new one whatever it might be UKIP then will vote what they think in the interest and in the way they think is in the best interest of the people in their borough and not according to any party whip system and this plays out really well on the doorstep I find people don't like to think that their politicians are in the pockets of their party and put party first ahead of people uh, you want a referendum and you want people to vote to leave the European Union. Have you published a roadmap as to what would then happen if that vote was a yes to leave? Mm, wouldn't that be great? Yes, there will be a roadmap. I mean, the, the Lisbon Treaty, actually, obviously, you know, for the first time, actually gave us that exit opportunity. Yeah, have you published a roadmap? And we will be negotiating. I mean, there, there is, I'm not the legal expert on this, but there are certainly ways in which you can come out of Europe fairly, fairly quickly. Oh, there's a longer route as well. But have, We're you, in a pub very, have very you published strong... any of that detail? Well, I, I, not, not that I've, I've read, but certainly there are ways to do it. You know, we're the sixth strongest world economy. I think we're in a very strong yeah. position once we've left the EU to be able to negotiate uh, yeah. a very good trade deal with well, the European right, Union, but which is what people what, wanted, what they voted for in 1975. Would, what would be our exact status with the European Union if we were to leave? It would be, I think, what people voted for back in 1975. It would be an independent, sovereign country in a trade agreement, a very positive and valuable trade agreement with the European but Union. 1975, uh, I voted in that referendum, so I remember it well. 1975 involved the free movement of peoples. That is something that I don't think that UKIP wants, and I don't think it's something that the country wants, and we see that very clearly. 70% of people now are deeply so, concerned about immigration. So it wouldn't be 1975 of them from then. black minority ethnic communities. So our so, status would, would not be going back to 75, it would be going back to something before that. Andrew, it sounds like you're complaining that we might have something that's better than 1975. That seems no, I'm like just a trying positive to, find to out, me. I'm just trying to find out what it is. Well, like I said, that seems like a positive to me. We will yeah. negotiate a trade deal. We will, we, we will negotiate all manner of uh, issues. And I think, yeah, we want to do what's best okay. for the British people. We want our borders back. We want our sovereignty back. We want our country back. Would you be upset if a bunch of Romanian men moved in <laughs> next door to you? Well, Andrew, where I live, I'm surrounded by one and two bedroom flats. If 10 Romanian men moved in next door to me, I think I'd certainly want to ask questions. And that's obviously very different from, say, a Romanian family moving in next door. If 10 Romanian men moved into me, I'd think, are they being ripped off by an unscrupulous landlord, in which case I'd be concerned? I'd think, are they up to no good, in which case I'd be concerned? Or I think, are they perhaps being trafficked by a gang master? So I hope that that would be a point of concern. And I don't think there's anything wrong in that. I think that's a humanitarian approach but obviously that would be very different from a, a Romanian family moving in who were working who were learning to speak English who wanted to contribute to the British economy and wanted to be part right. of British life maybe if your boss is watching he'll have found out how to answer that question now well I so think he was Evans? put in a difficult position and given a very ah. short time to answer you've thankfully given me more time you're, you're always in difficult positions Suzanne Evans thanks for joining us